near Calamel Building Marin, our floating dream home. Hope you enjoy our look at our life of building a catamaran. Welcome back. A lot has happened at the helm since our last update. Cal has completed the wiring for the B&G panels, installed them, and now for the very first time, we're ready to fire up the electric propulsion system. The moment feels like a mix of nerves and excitement. After so many hours of planning, building and wiring, this is the point where we find out if it all pays off. Join us as we walk you through the testing process and with a bit of luck, hear the engine come to life. So after six odd years of waiting, we're finally getting to fire up our electric drives, our propulsion system. So today what we're going to do is we're going to we're give us motors a spin over. We've already disconnected the, uh, the prop shafts from the uh, from the motor drives, uh, we took the chain coupling off just so that we uh, don't go dry spinning the prop shafts. But we're actually going to turn on our motors and hopefully it's all going to go as it should. Before we do that, we're going to go down into here and turn on our, our 24, oh, sorry, our 48 volt battery system. So follow me. First up, we're just going to power up our battery system. You can see the lights starting to come on, which is a damn good sign. And we turn on our BMSs. Okay, so there's the battery systems up and running, so which is good. Right, we'll get back over to the dashboard. Sorry, over to the helm station. Right, so we'll try our port one first. Uh, this is our port screen um, and ignition for it. Turn it on, and up she comes. That's good to see. Um, this really is a plug and play system from uh, from Thunderstruck. We've we've done nothing really, but put it all in and and turn it on. So that's our screen up now. We can see we've got our battery voltage is sitting at 51 ish. Um, no current obviously, temperature's about right for the, for the temperature of the day. So we'll give her a push forward on the throttle and uh, we'll see what, uh, what's going to go ahead. So you can hear the motor spin up, that's a good sign. And you can see there. Back down, very quick responsive. Go into reverse. Not much current on it because obviously it's free spinning. So there you go. So that one's running up all right. Just shut him down and we'll start up the starboard one. Hopefully it'll do exactly the same. Yep. So up with our servcon. Come up, it's reading battery, no amps obviously. Temperature seems about the same, which is good. Alright, so we'll go forward on the throttle. So it's only pulling 10 amps, but that's nothing because uh, it's obviously it's free spinning. There's no, there's no torque on it. So pull it back, and then we'll go into our reverse. She's all good, doing what she's meant to do. Extremely responsive from uh, from actually spinning uh, to stopping. So it's an instant torque being electric drive, of course. So, so there you go. The only thing we noticed is there's a bit of a bit of noise on it. And when we had a look at it um, earlier in the piece, we uh, realised that the belts are uh, were left 
and my fault, I left the belts under tension for probably close to five years um, without spinning them over and the belts are actually uh, deteriorate a little bit so I'll, I'll replace the, the drive belts um, before we launch it. There you go, electric drive works. Now, um, 12 volt system for the boat as well. So our DC panel now is up and live. Um, you know, as you can see underneath there now, we've got everything's all wired in. Uh, we've still got a couple of little things we need to finish off, but uh, I think you always, <laughs> you always will have. Um, basically now everything on the panel is operating. We've run through a few tests and made sure they work. Um, we're, we're pretty, pretty happy with it. And we can sort of show you a couple of things. So if I turn on the, the boilers, so we've got the two boilers on this boat, where it, which the boilers are actually the, the hot water boilers. They're, uh, they're heated by 48 volts. Uh, but we've got a 12 volt system to actually control them, uh, to actually turn them on and off. And um, we also have a put up on our dashboard up here, uh, we have um, uh, our boiler controls. So we, we, we decided that we wanted to have it so that we could have the boilers on or off. We're not on and off all the time. Obviously we don't have engines, so um, we're not getting hot water heating uh, from a motor uh, to heat the boilers. So it's actually electrically heating the boilers. 48 volts as I said before, but we uh, wanted to have the option to turn them on and off and I didn't, really didn't want to run 48 volts up here So we put in a 12 volt to 48 volt relay system And now uh, with controls up on the dashboard so we can turn them on I'm not sure whether you can hear that but there's a bit of a bit of a click That's the solenoid coming in for for the starboard boiler And there's also a light on the dashboard that tells us that we've actually got the boilers on So we don't make the mistake of leaving them on because really you don't need to have hot water boiling all the time only when you want to have a shower you turn the boilers on have a shower turn them off we can still do the same for the for the port port one it's exactly set up the same so that's uh that's working quite well we're pretty happy with that um the other thing we've uh commissioned up is our now um uh, bilge pump system so what we've done is you can probably see over on the corner over here um, we've got a series of switches and lights series of switches and lights up here which are uh, for all of our bilge pumps. We've also got um, some alarms in places where we've got through holes. Uh, we've put alarms in, so just a float alarm to say that uh, in case we've got an issue with the through hole leak, we've just got a little uh, float switch in there that lets us know what's going on. So we can actually I'll power them up. Um, where are we? I'll work out my dashboard switches now. Uh, that one and that one. Okay, so you'll see they've come up. The lights on there are actually too bright. I've got to put a couple of resistors in those because they're just a tad bit too bright at the moment. Um, at night, night time, that'd be terrible, but uh, similar to what I have with the, the other panel, but I forgot to put a uh, um, resistor in there. Um, what we've got on the systems, we can actually test that our bilge pumps work. So we can actually turn them on, check that, make sure that our pumps are running. You can actually hear them running. And also you'll hear the alarm if we do get a trigger, so in other words, a bilge pump starts, and you know this thing shouldn't have bilge pumps running it ever. Um, but if we do get somewhere where a bilge pump has trips off, or we get a, an alarm in the in the aft or in the uh, the mid section of the boat, then we'll actually get an alarm like that to tell us that uh, we've got that um, we've, we've got water in there, which where it shouldn't be. And that's pretty much where we're at at the moment. Um, the rest of the switches, uh, bits and pieces, are being tested. They're working. Um, so yeah, we're pretty happy with that. Our AC system, uh, we're about to commission that up fully, um, but uh, we've just got to wait till we finish off a couple of things on the inverter charger underneath to make sure we're ready to go for that. Uh, but bailing it out, it's all worked, um, so we should be pretty right to go. So that's where we are so far with all of our electrics. Thanks for tuning in. We hope you enjoyed this insight to building a catamaran.